There we go. Hey, artists and fans, we're ready to start our live video to do the matching countertop and backsplashes to the big counter that I just showed you guys a little bit ago. Our customers that actually have this countertop are here right now, checking it out. Are we facing the right direction? Yeah. All right, perfect. We're still mastering the whole like, you know, right side up for the camera. So here we go. Can everyone, um, I already showed you guys all of the other counter and I'm gonna pan over there real quick. Don't mind us sticking to the floor real slow. <laughs> so it's going to match this big beefy rock edge mm -hmm. all right are we ready that sounds real cool i know can you see the piece nice and close yes so i'm going to do the counter and the back splashes at the same time, after Travis gets himself on the top from the box. Fly trap. Fly trap. Um, he'll move around with the camera when I do the backsplashes as well. I'm going to pour everything at one time. And if you have any questions, it's monitoring the feed. So make sure to tell us hi and chime in. Hey, Dave. Hey, Aaron. This was a really fun design to do and it really doesn't do any justice what you see so far away so at the end we'll zoom in closer so that way you can see it so here i'm just putting on the epoxy with absolutely no thought process involved you just pour it on because it's really just becomes your background Getting our pour on, David. I'm using, uh, I'll probably tell you what I'm using because some people have asked for this recipe. That was coastal gray, stone gray, winter gray, and French blue is my background. This has already been fogged. It's been primed with um, dolphin gray, fair paint and primer one, and fogged with all the colors that we'll show you at the end. So again, I'm just putting this on as a background. Everything we use today is all spray paints, no mica powders or paste or anything. It's all things that you can get at Home Depot. No alcohol. No alcohol either, since that's hard to find these days. We did our pre-COVID hoard. Of alcohol? Yeah. Yeah, we stocked up before this stuff started. But we didn't know. We just <laughs> bought it. If you guys have any questions along the way, please just ask away and I'll relay that question to Stacy if I can't answer it myself. I'm just taking a little of this dark gray real quick. Hey I want, Keith. Want it more on the dark side for uh, the rock edge. I'll still blend all the colors over, but I'm just gonna take a little of the dark and push it into my rock. This is what, like a three inch rock edge? Yes. Customer would was designed to have her counter to, or her cabinets raised, but that wasn't an option. So what I did was build her a nice beefy three-inch thick perimeter edge uh, for that uh, uh, profile there, uh, which raises the counters itself uh, two and a quarter inches. Or raises the sink two and a quarter inches and well, raises the, the counter three inches. For the fact that there's a little window there that they wanted it to. Jeff use. Thornton, we are using stone coat countertops epoxy. epoxy. Not the art coat, just those regular countertop epoxy. What up, Philip? Thanks for coming. Hey, Melissa, how you doing? Staying safe on the front line there? So, RN that I. Uh, grew up with out in Thousand Palms. Oh, hey there. Thanks for joining us. And Philip Poplowski, he's a Marine I served with. Oh, awesome. Yes, David Rice. We love stone coat countertops. We've tried others, but 
this is our go-to and this is what we're going to be loyal to from here on out artist till death is in the house we're making if you didn't catch i'm going to pan over here real quick yeah go for it a big beefy three inch rock edge with a striation wood grain that mimics fantasy wood grain blue marble You know how we know what kind of marble it is? I sit there and over and over look at all kinds of different pictures of marble to try to find the ones that look similar so I can call it something. You know, because otherwise it's just something I came up with in my head, but I so want to see. It's that. actually marble that's that color. Yeah. The one I posted the other day, that was a real piece of marble on one side and mine on the other. Hey, Mar hey, Marcel. Thanks for watching, man. He's one of my uh, stepfather's buddies. Still lives out here in the desert. So here, I'm just kind of blending the colors together. Not too much. Just want them to start melding and marbling so that way they interact and that becomes the background color when I do my effect. I use four ounces for square foot. Um, on my pores, on my color coat, because I want it to have enough epoxy to flow over the edges and not have to worry about it running out. And on these side edges that you see, we still have the epoxy flow over to encapsulate it and keep it completely watertight, even though this will be next to a wall or a cabinet and a stove. It's not exposed. I think I got that word from my quiz. Encapsulate? Encapsulate. I use that word way too much whenever I'm explaining build process. <sighs> How the red guard or whatever marine barrier you have on the bottom side and then how the epoxy itself flows over the waterproofing and encapsulates. It's your power word. Encapsulate. I also, I've been Sorry on this. Sorry if I'm too close to the camera here. Like, you're getting it really up close in my head. But, yeah. I'm going to have to pop that later. Stop it. I'm just kidding. So, you just want to make sure that your epoxy goes over the edges. Which I'm doing. Same thing on the bottom. Even though this isn't exposed, it encapsulates. Encapsulate. Encapsulates the wood. And it helps your design flow as well. So. Hey Celeste, thanks for checking us out. Hey Celeste. So some of those fabricators that might be watching, I'm gonna pan back over to the sink. I used a one quarter inch round over bit on the top and on the bottom I used a one eighth round over on the bottom. Some people may find that if you don't use a round over bit, uh, at least a one eighth, you'll have like a transverse drip line lip created across the bottom of the edge there. So for your fabricators out there, pro tip, round the bottom, pro okay? Fact. Are you kidding if, me or are you if, mic today? <laughs> kidding. I love that guy. You know he's going to chime in at some point. I hope so. Mm -hmm. Better get on here, Kenny. Hello. A lot of my, a lot of my uh, building skills I got from Kenny Draculis over at RK3 Designs. Thanks for the hearts, Celeste. Uh, Dave, uh, it will be a drop-in, I mean, uh, undermount sink. Uh, it's the sink that they have is actually one of those uh, dual purpose you could use uh, for uh, drop-in or undermount but in this case we're doing the undermount so the template uh, comes with uh, um, uh, a reveal option so in this case uh, we're trying to keep the sink cut out as flush with the edge of the counter as possible or I could have peeled back some perforated edge for a reveal uh, but we're trying to keep it flush Oh, 
almost got everything blended there, guys. So she's chopping everything in with her hands, as you can see. Really helps with the melding. I got tired of buying chop brushes, really, so. I use them for specific designs, but, you know, for this isn't really necessary. That's my edge over there, babe. This edge. Oh. <laughs> this area over here. Yep. And the corner. And let me step aside. Uh, keep going. Bam. You got that. That's what us guys are here for. <laughs> is to remind the ladies whenever they don't cover all the edges. Oh, Rhonda, give them a boo right there when you watch this video. Negative. See, we always remember. Eventually. So another, uh, I think she already mentioned it, but that uh, sample she posted up uh, a week ago, uh, the comparison. Uh, a lot of people guessed the right one, but a lot of people were fooled into thinking that uh, uh, B was the stone and it was actually A that was the stone and B was the epoxy. So thanks for playing on that one. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I got that one. Felt like I did. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you got it. So I just torch out to make sure to get out all the bubbles, or at least some of them to start and like touch anything that's not flowing, any surface tension. Let me rub my hands on the back of that real quick. So you can see half a video that I already uh, uh, created on the build progress. Uh, I like to keep the fabricators in step on my builds on the uh, Stone Coat Countertop Insiders group. Uh, there's a lot of fabricators that look there for tips too, so I'll be using that same video to edit. Sorry, one second. And I will add a. Hey, you stop that. I will add it in. I'm gonna kill you. I'll add it that edited the uh, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> Can't, have fun. Can't even talk I anymore. Right? But yeah, the video is gonna get edited and we're gonna put together uh, a A to Z finish and then probably do another quick maybe two or three minute video on the final uh, with the install. Alright, so I'm taking nutmeg and I'm going to visualize this direction I'm going. Oh man, I wasn't even scrolling for these questions. Okay, We're, I'm on it guys, don't worry. All right, after, uh, so. So he'll catch up in a second. What I'm doing is I'm just putting down some background color. You're not gonna really see much of this because um, I'm gonna put, pull all these colors through again. Oh, we got tons of Arco. We buy this stuff in like, I don't know, how many gallons at a time? At least. 15 10 to, to eat between 10 and 15 gallons at a time and Keith if you don't use around the one the bottom it won't encapsulate that's correct encapsulate. somebody's paying attention <laughs> so again this is just background color it's you're not going to see much of that at all that so there's some cool YouTube videos uh, for assisting you with the install on the undermount sinks and what you'll really want to do is make sure you have two 36 inch uh, trigger clamps uh, and a two by four that's about 40 inches long and some microfiber tiles to wrap around it so whenever you're mounting you have an anchor point uh, you can find undermount sink install videos on youtube for people that are mounting undermounts to like uh, granite countertops it's the same concept here uh, except they use the um, uh, clip hardware that comes with it in a lot of cases unless I'm doing double thickness uh, if it's a single thickness I'll have to use a kind of like a screw strip type setup but it's actually going to be clamping 
the sink to the to the bottom of the countertop and with the uh, silicone under it as well yep so so what our customer Teresa noticed I started putting the background nutmeg on there and realized I was following this pattern instead of the countertop pattern just on this piece so all I did is chop that little part in and keep going so very this, forgiving in its wet stage at this stage yes eventually not so much but right now not too bad Hello, Mr. Mwago from Nairobi, Kenya, watching. Hey, espresso. What do you need to know, Marcel? You have a lame question, but you have to espresso. ask. Espresso. What's up? So this is espresso, guys. <laughs> Again, it's just background color. You're not going to see a lot of this. This is just so that way as it moves, when I start to blend it all, it's got some sort of dimension underneath. The primary colors we wanted to focus on was more of the grays, um, a little hint of this gray blue, and um, a hint of this brown, you know, once, but it, it really doesn't take over. And then this amazing rose copper that is one of my new favorites. So what I'm doing on this other side splash, right, is I'm looking over at the counter that I just poured to make sure I'm kind of going at the same angle as those lines are going. A little steep on the right as far as, bring it a little straighter, like more towards, no, maybe like 80 I'll degrees. I, okay. You try to be helpful. Thanks, honey. It's my first time. Okay. Now for the fun part. <laughs> now we mess it up. Erica Bauer's on. Hey, Erica. She's saying, looking good, Stacy. Thank you. Thank you. It looks like Art a hot mess right death. now, but promise it gets better. <laughs> okay. I'm going to fog it with black and then that copper rose. Okay. Artist till death till Thornton. Erica put artist till death till Thornton. Oh. Artist till death. <laughs> I fogged it with the black. Well, why is she spraying spray paint over what she just did? And then I'm fogging it with this copper because I want this to be my background color. It's the copper rose. Copper rose. And I'm going to take some dark gray. She likes to get the dark ones on, the dark lines on first. Yeah. And right now there's no um, particular... Thompson, how you doing? Hey babe, Thompson Lewis is on. Hey Thompson. We were just talking about you the other day. How's it going amigo? Thompson joined us over at uh, the pro shop at RK3 Designs out in Seguin, Texas. Rhonda Draculis and Kenny Draculis have an amazing uh, workshop. If you weren't able to get on their online pro class, uh, try to take a, take an interest in jumping in their, their uh, residential program over there or in-person program. Yeah. Hello, Heather. In -person, that's for sure. And Jeff Kirk, what's up, man? How you doing? How did that bid come to, did it come to fruition? The one from the realtor there, Jeff? We're not a poor in place company, so we try to refer oh, yeah. out to people that are able to put amazing work on there that are local to us, like Jeff Kirk, he's on the thread. Uh, he does some awesome work as well. I, I know he does fabrications too, but I, I, he he he's uh, willing to go travel to do pour and place in Southern California. Thanks, Thompson. We appreciate the good feedback. So what I am. Is it hiding I'm just pulling through colors right now, and the goal is to get the colors to play with each other. Okay, so 
it's not, there's no real rhyme or reason at the moment other than how much of one color I want and where I want to put it, but this is all going to blend together when I heat it up. And I'm just adding these little effects as I go. So this edge right here there, uh, Tracy, you can see it looks pretty beefy. It's a three inch rock face edge. I had to actually double, uh, triple up MDF on the perimeter edge. So that's four thicknesses worth of MDF on the three quarter uh, to give you that three inch thickness of an edge. Hopefully that answered your question. Right? As I move all around. Get you some uh, Eddie Munster, or we can get you some Munster shoes. <laughs> Look like, uh, yeah. Build you some wood blocks underneath. Yeah. So the colors I put down so far, guys, is a uh, dark gray, espresso, some nutmeg, um, winter gray, which has that blue gray tone to it. I'm doing French beige right now to bring in some of the lightness. That's why I start usually with the darker colors. <laughs> As Heather Adams said, get, get you some stilts. Right. Uh, I'm reading Heather your question. Adams, don't you have some sort of shoes I could buy from you? Like uh, your shoe your shoe store? That'll make me a little taller. <laughs> Heather, what is the name of your company? I had a friend I wanted to tell her about it and I totally forgot. Well, Travis, so remind me. So, Marcel, uh, you asked if there's any way of getting a design on the countertop, like Marcel, Hart, Nancy. She, while she's in the kitchen, she can see it within the counter. So, yeah, to answer your question, we can do custom decal inlays in our countertops, if you wish. All right? Uh, we're getting ready to to invest in a very high-end cricket machine so we can do some custom logos and designs so I hope that answers your question Marcel we can definitely customize decals so I'm pulling in white be careful if for any of you guys that are actual porn on your white it'll take over like crazy if you're not careful so just be delicate with that hey Alan thanks for the compliment Thompson's saying you need some longer sticks for your short. Ha <laughs> ha, you're right. <laughs> and then I feel like it's just going to be too long when it's close to me. Can't win, right? So I'm pulling in that copper rose in there. This is one where it will stay kind of on the top. Anytime you're going to use a metallic, it, it doesn't blend the same way, which I like because it'll give it a cool effect. And then after I add this color... I'm going to start heating it up. So everything looks pretty good. A little bit more. Right more gray. It's got a, the beige is taking over. All right, my dark gray. Where'd you go? Yes, the depth is there too. Mm -hmm. Thanks, David. So the countertops are not too high for her. She's just too short for them. Okay. <laughs> this also is a really big edge. So he Heather, it's, it's when I built her. these countertops or these benches for her, yeah. they fit me. But I confirmed the height. Okay. <laughs> and I even accounted for the four-inch caster. Are you saying that I'm shrinking? I don't know. <laughs> it just weren't accounting for this three-inch. Right. This is a big win. Okay. So now I'm gonna heat this guy up before I move on to the next one. Let me pan in a little bit. She's getting there. So I'm going to start by doing my edge with the rock edge. I'm going to push the color forward so that way it falls forward onto the rock. Onto the rock. That's the edge. It does look like a rock, so. But you want those colors to really push in. Just so you want the color to pour over the front. That way 
you have that consistent pattern going straight all the way down to the bottom of the countertop. And it looks really awesome on, on the rock face edge when it's completed. That flat side you see, there's actually going to be a heat shield installed on the side of the left side of this countertop over here where I'm pointing at and on the left side of this because uh, the way the stove is it might put a little extra heat so I'm, we're going to have our fabricator over at uh, McGrath Metal. You want to zoom in a little bit? So you can I see am. It's a little tough getting a zoom in but I'll, I'll bring the cam I'll bring the camera to you here in a second. Uh, Tracy, uh, we're using copper rose, dark gray, uh, stone gray in the base. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll let Stacy run through it. Okay, so on the base, Tracy missed it. On the base, I'm doing stone gray, coastal gray, winter gray, and a, a little bit of French blue. On top, I'm using dark gray, um, the winter gray again, espresso, nutmeg, white. And Popper Rose. Oh, and French Beige. Last one. I also fog with black and with that Popper Rose as well. So you can see how it kind of has a bronzy look with the black undertone. That's what created that look. Okay. Oh, there's the dimension you were talking about, David. Right there where the, the copper melds with the black and creates like a bronzy look. That's pretty cool, and it's going to shimmer nice, too, under the light. Anything that I want to move that doesn't quite look real, I'll move with the stick as well as my heat gun. Because um, you don't want any big bubbles or, you know, spots that don't look like natural stone. So you want it to just kind of play with it, with all the different colors to play with themselves and, like, interact and... You see how it's flowing over the front of the rock? All right. I'm going to pan over here to where you can see this. This is set up about two and a half hours now. It looks awesome. We're going to go scrape the drips here in just a little bit. Uh, putting this bad boy back in the carriage here. <laughs> you want to go in one direction, okay? If I start pushing it this way, it's going to just create a bunch of squibbles. So you want to keep it going the same direction, but you can move it gently to kind of spread it apart and spread the epoxy so that way it, you know, looks very organic and natural. But if you start going the wrong direction, you'll regret it. Thanks for the compliment on the rock edge there, Thompson. Yeah, I, I, I took what I learned from uh, Kenny out there at the workshop and, you know, all us fabricators, we, we, we develop our own style and flavor of the way we do things. So, you know, I took a lot of different examples that Mike Quist had done and, and Kenny had done and some that I had seen on the insider groups. And I really kind of formed my own flavor of rock face edge. So uh, I appreciate the compliment on that. All I'm doing here is taking some of the dripped epoxy. Um, anywhere I don't see it, like at the bottom of the rock face edge, just to make sure it flows into all those little nooks and crannies. That's looking awesome. We'll give it a once over. Do you want me to relocate the tripod? Yeah, I'm going to move on. Well, I can do this back right here. Okay. Um, I still should probably move. That's up to you there. Poxy shoes. Poxy shoes. We need a brand that or something. What, make the most terrible most shoe? Most, I, I didn't do espresso. Maybe silicone bottom shoes. Maybe eh? Silicone bottom shoes. Shoes with silicone bottoms. That is kind of genius, actually. Uh-oh. Hey. Uh, Heather. Nobody has permission to <laughs> use that idea. I will consider that intellectual property theft. Uh, that was my idea. I will sue. Hey Jeff, I, I believe I got your uh, Facebook message there. No problem, buddy. Um, I just couldn't go in and read it. So I appreciate that. And you're well worthy of the mention. 
We actually, for the big counter, we actually poured it in two sections because as you can see, just for this little area, it's taking a little bit to get the striation down. And so, yeah, uh, we sectioned off uh, about a foot before the sink and we took care of this. This is 38 inches by uh, uh, eight feet and then plus two feet on the on the right side of the, the angle there. So yeah, that took a, probably about an hour or so, hour and a half, and then we did the second section. We And it, it was still kind of wet over there and we were able to blend it in nicely. Hey, do I have more dark gray somewhere? Yeah. Never mind, I answer my own question. I love it when you do that. I know. The cans are in the way from the camera. Sorry. <laughs> Thompson says, too late, the uh, shoes are now in production. <laughs> hey, I want my 51%, Thompson. I know, right? And what's up, Brian Cochran? How you doing, buddy? Sorry I missed golfing with you the other day. We had this uh, family dinner that took way too long to make, but it was yummy. I see you guys had a good time out on the course. That's awesome. Yes, Alan, we'll, we'll go ahead and drop the color recipe in again. Uh, we've we've mentioned it two times. We'll probably mention it one more time just for good measure towards the end of the video. I'll put it in the comments. Yeah. Well. I have a double sink ink for top coming. That would be awesome. Oh yeah, check our sample out. Who's that now? Uh, Alan Chambers. He likes your sample for this type. Oh yeah. He's okay. doing an eight feet uh, double sink uh, bathroom countertop. Bronson, how you doing? The Naughty Artisan. Said it right, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Vegas open yet? Vegas open yet? Hey, Karen, uh, Karen Krause, um, I don't know if we're going to... This is Facebook Live, so I don't know if we can post it on YouTube. Uh, but I, I am... Save it and do that. Okay, so okay. we'll work that out. I am still editing a fabrication video. We're going to put the final uh, videos together on that. But it'll be, it'll stay on our Facebook as a live, so you can watch it again, even when it's not live. I'm telling you, Thompson, I want my 51%. Uh -huh. Silicone bottom shoes. Y'all heard it from me. <laughs> <laughs> For the heat shield, uh, Jeff, uh, we'll probably go with like a, a one eighth thickness. Um, um, it's going to be like a brush steel. I don't know if it's going to, I haven't checked with my metal fab guy. I'll be getting with him on Monday, but I don't know if he's going to use like hot press or cold roll, but it's going to come out looking, uh, like a brush stainless. Okay, a little more dark gray. No problem, Karen. Thank you. Eric, man, what's up? I love having a cameraman. Can I just say, like Erica, you know what it's what's up with that? Having everything, like all your angles and all that, because this is so much nicer than me having to figure out where this is pointing and having to answer all your questions at once. So much easier. So, babe, this is your new job. When I pour live, uh, yeah. you are the cameraman. It's gonna cost you a drill press. <laughs> Not playing. Oh, my God. Yeah, Thompson, have your people get with my people. Mm -hmm. We'll work this out. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be it's gonna be a big seller. <laughs> might the even, mugs are epoxy. Yeah, cream. might even cut Mike Quist in if he lets us sell it on his website. <laughs> epoxy shoes. Y'all heard it from me. I'm telling you, man. I'll, I'll let you drive this baby, though, Thompson. The verbal patent. Verbal patent. Yeah, right. Uh, Thompson asked if we lost the sound. Uh, Teresa, would you step in the other room and see if you can still hear the audio on the live? Oh. I, I just don't want the, the feedback to... Okay. You know, Karen, she says that we make a good team. <laughs> and what, it didn't always start out that way. Let me just be honest, okay? I'm going to humble myself. You know, learning to, to work with my wife and probably for her to work with me was probably extremely challenging 
on both sides of the spectrum there. Uh, yeah. Two different perceptions of how we contribute as a husband-wife team. Uh, it's There's some trying moments, but at the same token, we've come a long way, and I think we're doing really good as a team. So yeah. thank you for that compliment. The key is you got to learn to laugh. Is it over the edge, As long as she buys me tools for my lathe and all that crap, I'm good. It's still there. Is it okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mike Fleming, I don't know about that. Uh... Is it over the edge there, dude? Yeah. Okay. So, Mike's, Mike Fleming said, I just got elected for a new job. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah. I might have my daughter Shay jump in and do some video videography for us. But uh, we're getting ready to... Uh, we're edit the fabrication video with this install video. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Mike can hear us fine. Awesome. You heard us okay, Teresa? Thank you. I'm going to uh, shift. Okay. Which one are you working on right now? We'll do that one real quick. Okay. Well, we certainly could not burglarize anyone right now because you'd hear us coming <laughs> for like a mile. Squeeze, squeeze, <laughs> squeeze, squeeze. Yeah, mm. there'd be no secret. It's the epoxy duo. <laughs> That'll be your gang name. That's our gang name. No, we just broke in to vandalize your floors. <laughs> no, to vandalize the countertops. They'll need new ones, you see? So we're just heating it up so that way it starts to move. You can sit here a little bit. So yeah, I mentioned as long as she buys me lathe tools, I'll be happy camper. Mm -hmm. I turn out custom handles and I'm actually uh, in the process of uh, honing my skills for building custom fishing rods. And I'm gonna put my lathe turn epoxy mold handles on those rods that I'm building. So people that have not bought their Father's Day uh, gifts, a really great Father's Day gift is a custom handle. Any color, any style. I can inlay decals as well. But you gotta hurry up because uh, clocks are ticking. Well, even if it's not for Father's Day. Well, I know. I mean, if Make you some wanted good it for Father's Day. Bottle opener, some right, right, right. shave sticks. <laughs> Roger there that. You go. See, I got one. I sold the first one I ever made. And you I'm so cried. proud. I yeah, I almost cried about that one. You know, it was a it was a hybrid of olive burl and some other rainbowy colors. You can see that one on our our Facebook and our website. And uh, my inspiration right there, I'm throwing a shout out to uh, Jake Thompson. Uh, I believe it's Jake Thomas. Okay, and uh, Carl Jacobson and Zach Higgins. Those guys are really inspirational and they i haven't uh met either of them personally but i have spoke to a couple of them on the phone and uh some really awesome guys great advice so i'm much appreciative of this your mentorship here. thank you me and heat guns we have a bad history <laughs> oh and I burn myself if, on them. if kenny's watching he's probably wondering where the hell is my bottle opener huh. it's it, in the mail with the gloves like yeah, unique. we're sending it with the gloves. The uh, yeah, heat guns and I, if it was sitting there, I inevitably would burn myself on it. And then that'd be bad. But I typically burn myself on heat guns every... Oh, on this side, time. honey? On the right side of this? Um, yes. Wait. Use your words. <laughs> what? Come on. What do you think? Yeah, it's like a These little straight. These lines need to go a little straight. <laughs> That's what I get paid the no bucks for. The no bucks? Yeah. Some people say big bucks. No. 
So I know the lighting's not all that great. Once she kind of finishes this piece, I'm gonna flip onto the other side where the rock edge is and try to get a higher angle down at her. Or maybe off to the left. If you have any questions, guys, let us know. Doesn't have to be about this piece in particular. Could be about fabrication. Uh, could be about uh, recipes for other stuff. Some signature designs my wife is responsible for is a very popular fantasy brown marble. Uh -huh. And uh, she uh, invented the peacock granite. And uh, she did a collaboration video also with Rhonda Draculis over at RK3. Uh -huh. And so they made those two styles a hit right there. And uh, a lot of people love them. I love the, seeing the different variations of the, the peacock granites and, and the uh, fantasy marbles. I know Keith McGinnis, he's on here too. He did an awesome uh, countertop install. Um, very impressed with your work, Keith. And uh, I see uh, Chris Williams coming up too. He's, he's another good one. He, he's, he's definitely uh, humbling himself to learn the craft. And he uh, owns Platinum Designs, or Platinum Epoxy Designs, I believe. <laughs> or something like that. Platinum Epoxy. Sorry Chris. for butchering anyway, your name. He's a good, uh, yeah, I apologize, Chris. You can beat me up later on that one. Uh, he probably would. He looks like a pretty beefy guy. Like, All right, yeah, don't mess around uh, uh, letting that, um, don't go too low on the Bondo there, Keith. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hey, thanks a lot for watching, Keith. Uh, enjoy the rest of your build. So the goal for any of this is really, don't be afraid. For those of you who are actually going to pour it like that, don't be afraid to just go with your colors. You're going to move it around. You can add more if you're like, ah, it's a little too much here, or I drowned out my gray, I want some more. You know, you just keep adding. You know, but not so much that you can't see that like bronzy background. So you have to also know when to kind of stop, you know. But yeah, I you know Rhonda and I have that habit. Even with you, honey, or everybody listening, like whenever I think she's working a, a piece too long, I'll, I'll, I'll yell at her and I'll say, step away, Rhonda. You know. Any of you guys who've watched Rhonda Dracoulis know that she has a hard time stepping away. She's got to sometimes take her own advice and step away. Uh-huh. So it's, it, gets, it gets hard because you always want to do more and you, you see little things that you're like, oh, that could be better and that could be better. All right, I'm going to heat this bad boy up. So what, we're coming in tomorrow to do the flood coat? Uh, Monday. Monday. Tomorrow. Monday, Monday, Sunday, Monday. And we do not work on Sundays. Oh, yeah. Sundays are off. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing with our startup. We was working every day for three straight months. No days off. Everything was geared to get our business up and running and trying to keep up with customer demand while we were renovating and setting up our shop. So it was, it was relentless. And so we kind of had to make the agreement in order to not let you know quality time and everything go to the wayside we had to, we had to commit oh, to our sundays to being off i'll get that wired up for you in a second yeah this won't reach the entire okay way. i'm gonna move the tripod back a little bit So a friend of ours suggested that we uh, offer a, an added bonus on, on our contract that we would pay to come and watch your counters get poured live. You think it's worth the extra? You guys got the first bonus without having to pay off. I think it's totally. It's, this is the most amazing thing. It's very cool. What would be cool is because, you know, like you can have the video and you know, people come over and they're all like, excited about your counters you're like wait oh yeah check this out 
check this out. I want to see how it's made, you know? So that might... Here, use this one. Do you want me to move my gun Yeah, you're gunning over here. Oh, you're brave. Touching it with no gloves. Yeah, I got a little alcohol in my hands real quick. So I, we had to switch the foot pedal because the other side, we used the, uh, the on-off two-step uh, foot switch from Harbor Freight, but we only had the single step installed on that one. It was an extra one that got mixed up in the batch that we were installing to our benches here. So that's why I had to switch it around. And so you'll see like there's, when, when we zoom in on the camera, you're gonna see like some of that paint kind of leaves little pieces on top as you're pulling it through. But all that goes away when we do the flood coat. So there's no worries there. He'll be right back there, folks. I'm gonna pour both of these together at the same time. Oh, uh, Mike Fleming was like, where's your glass of wine, Stacy?" Or you might make a recipe that you that can't happen. quite remember. That's why we video, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> right, Renda? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what are you trying to say there, Travis? She needs to make, uh, like, careful with the spray, the overspray. She needs to make a Corona granite. Corona granite? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can we can inlay decals. Uh, we'll find the digital file for it, upload it to the Cricut software, and print that baby out. Get it into a project. If it's too big, obviously, we'll go to our local print and sign. Uh, they they actually did our Honda logo. We did a conference table for the Honda the Be Desert Boardroom, uh, and we got that business from uh, Gil Rutenberg. So we appreciate that business. Thank you. And that Honda table turned out awesome. We have a little short video on the on the reveal for that. So check us out on on our website and our Facebook there. If you want All to right. see the Honda video. Final version, folks. Thanks for hanging with us. You'll get to see what it all looks like. Let me stick it. You just wipe it on your apron. No, I don't she's try see, to get she, She's a me. she's still she's a true chick, man. She's wearing an apron and doesn't want to get it dirty. It gets dirty, but I already purposely put it on there like you put hey, it on your shorts. I'm gonna show you my epoxy shorts, okay? My shop shorts. It's got everything you can think of on it. It's got epoxy paint, red guard, all that crap. Man glitter. It's like sawdust. It's like encapsulated. Encapsulated. Into the epoxy that's on my shorts. It's encapsulated. It's it's I'll man glitter. It's encapsulated. That's my man glitter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, can you tell it doesn't get dull around here very often? Or at home keeps lights going, you know. <laughs> that is true. Besides, work is supposed to be fun, right? Yes, absolutely. Occasionally, I might have that like everybody loves Raymond kind of vibe going on in here. What, what vibe is that? Oh, you haven't seen everybody loves Raymond? No, I have. But what's the vibe? Oh, uh, it's uh the the husband and wife is always like bickering at each other. Oh, that happened in yeah. a playful way. That's normal. No, <laughs> what up, Ray? Thanks for watching us. That happens plenty. <laughs>
Jeff's like, that's how we do. <laughs> Which Jeff? Kirk. Jeff Kirk. We have several, so we got a. Yeah, we got a few Jeffs out there. So, Ray, since you're just joining us, um, we're doing an epoxy countertop. My wife's working on some backsplashes right now. And they're going to cure to full thickness. And we're going to be throwing up a video there pretty soon. So, this is our new biz. It's pretty awesome. You know, she's transitioning from her job maybe in the future. And I've, I've been on staff at the Veterans Hospital in Loma Linda for a few years now. And I, I'm still on staff, but... I'm not currently working because I went all in on my epoxy biz. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a registered respiratory therapist. And then we're breathing in all of this lovely And we're breathing so all this junk in. We wear some, you know, protective gear. We have an exhaust system here, but the, the, uh, today. Uh, the motor is getting repaired right now. And I'm not a fan of wearing a mask while I'm trying to do it because I can't seem to focus when I, I don't know. Yeah, right. I think it hampers creativity or something. <laughs> Where your other stick is? Is it over there? I don't know. Okay. Here it is. This one's too tiny. Okay. You need a new paint stick? Or a small, a, a large cutting blade? No, like this one. Huh? No, like this one. Paint stick. Oh my god. shop here so we're inside the pouring studio those are our rack system that was fabricated by McGrath metal we got a couple other projects racked right now in curative process and there's some other another rack that we built and our pouring table over there and on the other side of this curtain here is, is where we do all our honing hey Jesse what's up what's up Leo how you doing pastor Mike Yeah, Pastor Mike. Mike oh, Lerma. Pastor Cheryl, let's get it's it Pastor going. Pastor Mike Lerma. He wants that? Pastor, like, not Pastor. Mike's not a Pastor? No. I'm talking about Pastor Mike as a Pastor Mike. Oh, Mike Lerma, you're not a Pastor? No, I don't think so. Watch, he's going to tell us here in just a second. Well, you'd be surprising me right now if that's the case. Yeah. So it's it's setting, setting up a little. Up, yeah, because it's getting a little later in the game here. But so she's going to heat it here in a second. Yeah. So it doesn't move as, as easily, so you have to heat it up and move it around. But we're this is still working time. It's fun. It's about 45 minutes to an hour, though I have honestly work pieces much longer than that, just depending on the design. Um, only because I know that the next coat is a flood coat, and so anything that's not perfect right now is fine because I'll be able to fix that in the flood coat and send it off. Um, if there's anything chunky, you know, that didn't flow perfectly. And the flood coat kind of just levels it out. And... Mm -hmm. And seals it all in. It all encapsulates. <laughs> That's what's going to turn that surface into a food grade or a food a food grade safe uh, surface there. Yeah. Okay, so Mike's not a pastor. He's a man of God. Right. Thank you for clarifications. Hey, Misty, how you doing? How's life at the VA?
What's up, Jesse Martinez? Man, how you been, brother? Gray hair? You got plenty of that. I do not. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Hey, Misty. Oh, we had two Misty's on here. Yeah. Two Misty's. Yep. Misty Page is Nikki Cater's sister. Oh, She's okay. the one who ordered you, ordered across from you the other day. Yeah, well, no, I recognize Hey, Misty, how you doing, girl? Are the state uh, fishing recreation opened up yet? Because I am so dying to get out there. No. June 1st. June 1st? Oh. Uh, I'm going MIA on June 1st, honey. Just so you know. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Teresa. Teresa. We might be with you. Oh, roger that. <laughs> thanks for the heads up there. Hey, uh, what's my daughter say? Bet. Bet. Oh, Bet. It's like back in the 90s when there were people like Word. That's the new, uh, Equivalent to, bet? to yeah, bet. bet. It's like they saying word. Like you bet, but they just say bet. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, please don't. How old is she? 18. 18. Going on Still in the, like, 30. Snapchat world, you know, yes. like everything Snapchat, camera in front of your face at all moments of the day. Almost all moments. Of the day. Just a little more gray. Can't wait to have some time to work on my fishing rods. I'm waiting on uh, the headstock spindle replacement coming in for my delta lathe. It's a little tweaked, and, I, and although I can turn out a handle on it, I, I don't want to because I don't want I, I want it to be true. June first, yep. I know you guys know you're you're dropping rods in the water every every chance you get, or dropping hooks in the water. Okay. Anyway. If I dropped a rod in the water, I'd be pissed. <laughs> I would dive in and get it. You probably would. I'd like to see that, though. Sure you would. You should video on that one. Right? You'll, you'll never see be it alive. because, you know what? You don't go fishing. You don't enjoy fishing. The best part about fishing is you can drink wine while you're fishing. <laughs> Hey Sherry, how you doing? Sherry Slager's on. Hey Sherry. Oh, you went fishing today, David? Man, I'm jelly. I see you catching some big ones. I'm gonna get a close up because the video camera right here at this area. Not showing much. It's it's not showing all the dimension, but I'm gonna do a walkthrough once I'm done. I mean the graphics on here, it kinda looks like a cartoon. A cartoon? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's I, I think it's just the lighting though, but I'm gonna do a quick walkthrough after you get it. You can show the other pieces like how they're setting up. You want it. Yeah, I'll do that real quick. Real slow because I'll try to. Uh, uh, bring it up half the floor. Uh, Misty's telling you, oh girl, you should get out there and go fishing because it's the best. Oh. So, you, know what's the you can see a little closer. Look at that dimension, the bronze and the coppers and the grays and the light blues coming together. Moving over here to this. So it's not much to look at. When you're three feet away, or even photographing, because pictures really just don't do any of this stuff justice, because there's more dimension than what can be captured here. That's cool. Can you flip over the edge for me, babe? Is it all flowing over? Yeah. Since you're on that side? Yeah. yeah. Look at that dimension. The way the light hits the... Uh, now that's rose copper over black spray paint, but it comes out as like a bronze. Now 
And that's the beefy three inch rock edge there. So you can see more dimension. Look at that, man. Once that flood cut goes on, it's going to be smooth as glass. And then even, even more smooth whenever we hone it. It's going to have an amazing feel to it. So we'll pan back over to this one for those of you who are just tuning in. So for this big counter, we mixed up like an extra 30 ounces to, to hit the rock and fill in all these little voids and stuff like that. Uh, so we mixed up 30 ounces because it goes, it goes all the way around. That's all bar top. Okay. So that's, that's beefy rock edge all the way around. Look at the rich dimension that you're seeing here, the shimmer. Yeah, that's the, the great thing about doing this stuff, uh, David. There is no two countertops the same with our company. Everything is 100% unique and custom. You think it, we make it. Whatever helps you sleep. <laughs> See, everybody loves Raymond going on up in here. It's routed over. So the top part is the one quarter inch rounded over section. Hey, hunt for that backsplash over there. Which one you on that side, far side. Yeah. Look at the edge. In the middle area. The, the under part here, or on this? Is side? that the bottom of it? This is the bottom. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was gonna say, you might want to just top it, touch okay. it, so everything is encapsulated. We got it. We got it. <laughs> I yeah, I'm using the word encapsulate quite often, and uh, when I'm doing my videos, uh, uh, I'll be like, oh, this is so rudimentary. I'll be using the rudimentary, word rudimentary you? and encapsulate all the time. Like, That's your other one? Yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of like Mike Quist's fault. Why? Whoa, watch your step there, hey? Yeah, Go back to baby school, learn how to walk, eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Over and doesn't get chunky. It well, the lines look a little chunky. What are you talking about? The striation, it's not as it's a little chunkier. I don't know. Can I come, come take a look? Come in. What do you think? Okay, I see what you're what he's saying, how it looks like it's thicker. Of these the versus stripe? the yeah. Do you want some more color up in there? No, some more lines. Well, yeah, that has to yeah that okay. color that create lines. Okay. <laughs> I gotta be it's just, it's just on those pieces. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I gotta add maybe some maybe a little espresso if I can find it. Just That's on the wider parts. Was that white or, or is that like this? Whiter? Oh, whiter. Yeah. And, and the whiter. Wi and, the wi wider. and the white and the whiter. Oh, you meant white er. I thought he meant wide. No, I don't want you to go whiter. I want you to go thinner yeah. lines. Yeah, you do have the wider pieces. But Which is okay. Yeah, yeah, there's certain ones that. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to touch that. I was like, I don't want to touch that. There's just parts, and that's the cool thing is that that marble, you know what I mean? Like a yeah. true piece is gonna have all kinds of different variations. I don't know where I would really mess, mess yeah. with it too much more because it's. I know it has some really cool stuff. Depth in it, yeah. Which I think looks really cool. cool. Yeah. I'm going to some of these and like cut up maybe some of the white. Yeah, that uh, part. To continue on your question there, Karen, about the amount used to get it over the rock edge. Well, that's the three inch rock edge. We use the uh, probably about 30, in, 30 ounces extra just to make sure we can fill the voids. And we use the darker color for that. Um, not one of the creamy, creamier bases because if, if the color that you're trying to put over the rock edge is too light, it may look like, you know, like milky deposits on the, in the little coves and little little uh, uh, broken stone looking pieces or the sections of the, the face. Uh, David Rice wants to know how you feel about using uh, Kona Brown. Kona Brown is good, uh, but you really gotta be careful because it has a, a real reddish undertone and so it'll turn cherry real fast. You got it, Karen. It's cool. Yeah, Kona Brown is good. It's um, you just gotta be very careful with it. I think you're good. Yeah, I'm gonna keep those parts up though. So we'll blend. Too late to add gray, huh? I just added gray. Okay. I didn't see that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> David, don't be afraid to use it. Goes great with fantasy marble. <laughs> I don't use Kona on fantasy marble. I know, but like for it looks like. Did you use it on uh, Paulinina's? No. Because I saw the richness of that. Oh, that was the espresso. Espresso can also have kind of like a a very deep burgundy, mm -hmm. uh, rich color to it as well. So you just gotta be careful with the browns because they they can bring out other undertones. Oh, where's the two small pieces? What are you talking about? The two little tiny ones, the two inch by four and a half inch ones. I don't know. You didn't bring them out to me. Oh. Really? We'll we'll do those on uh, Monday. There's these two little tiny two. Where are they on your shelf? Box? They're on my they're on my workbench right now. Oh, for the window sill? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll do them on Monday. Yeah. Okay, a little too late to do them today. Yes. All right. That one will take like literally minute. 10 minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a whole different process. Oh, you'll still, you'll still get the other piece with, with all this stuff. The little window sill pieces. Okay. The small, yeah. 
so so what what colors are you interested in yeah yeah I can I can throw that in there it'll look really cool so uh, the kind of tip we have like a, a dark gunmetal gray chrome or gold I'll look at stuff when we're done. All right. I got a couple of handle samples in the in the lobby there. All right there, folks. Okay, so I'm going to walk. I'm going to do a little closey-closey. Yes, we'll get a little closey-closey. Hey, Brandon, how you doing? So what 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 logo did you come up with, man? What what did you what did you uh nail it down with? Oh, look at that. That's really cool. It's got a lot of depth. Some oh, yeah. people call well, my wife cool. the vein queen. Cool. She's really good at striations and veins. You are. Thank you. We all have our thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Some are a little skinnier, but I think it'll still slow pretty well. Oh, there's such cool effects with that copper, mm -hmm. with the black, and everything that it does. It's cool how it pulls the bottom colors. Uh -huh. Right. So everything that was underneath starts pulling up as you pull the stick through what you just sprayed yeah. down. So if you use alcohol, it'll do the same type of thing. Yeah. They really give it a bubble effect on the screen. Uh huh. So you see the undertone and what was underneath it all of a sudden instead of what was on top. Yeah. That looks cool. We think, Teresa. I love it. Awesome. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. That looks really good. And what's great is, so a design like this, you don't want it to all look the same. You don't want it to look perfect. You don't want the exact same flow or the same colors. You want variety because marble is going to move around. It's going to have different it's effects. Different. And so if you're trying to make that, that's the best part is that some parts will be darker, some parts will be bluer, some will have more white, you know? Yeah. And there's something cool to look at at every spot. That's the that's the fun thing. I was just really happy when you were able to make it match or blend in with my floor. Right. And not blend, but like offset it, pick up all the shades. Yeah, because this is deeper and more rich. Right. But you still have the color from my floor. Right. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Grab the tile sample. It's over there next to your pour, pour table. So we'll hold up the tile sample here so that uh, you can see the contrast. That looks awesome. So here, bring your tile over here, the, the one in your right hand. Get that next to it. Well, it was a combination of all of them. Got it? Yeah. So you see how close that is and how it complements? And the cabinets are going to be white. Yeah, but they're like light, light, light. Light gray, light, I'm sorry. Pale gray. Yeah. Pale gray. Yeah. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Let's set this down. We need to make sure we have Stephen to finish it. We're going to be here. You guys do Thanks, Merritt. Hey, we're excited to come get your install done, too. Merritt has a crazy, crazy Fun. cool couple of designs. Yeah. So you got the beach. Uh, bathroom vanity countertop and uh, another what, what did you call that I didn't electric ocean. electric ocean yeah, yeah. And that looks really cool I'll show you the samples for the electric ocean we're good oh, all right okay she wants to I'm sign tired. off live that's a lot of work even thanks Tony uh, you should be you all should be able to watch this video uh, later thanks for watching Karen we got to run too yeah, so thank you. If you have any questions, let us know. I'll put the colors in the comments so that way you can go back and find it and we'll make sure, we'll see if we can save it and download this and put it on our YouTube. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good weekend.